Okay, so I decided to break these down into different videos here. I originally had this all planned for uh, one video, which was the overview and the ambient occlusion fix, but I had to reboot because my Wacom tablet driver, for whatever fun reason, stopped working. So we're back, and how do we make this turn into one ambient occlusion that I can work with? As I was saying in the previous video, that this is faceted, and that's not really how... Uh, a face would look so there's a couple techniques that I can apply to fix these things and so I'm going to turn off one of these and start looking at this one right here um, one of the first things I'm going to do I'm going to duplicate the layer and the reason why is I like to uh, keep a vanilla so to speak version where I can go back to that in case if I accidentally destroy things um, I'm very good at uh, making mistakes that I have to fix. Every artist kind of has to work out a couple concepts before they really figure out how to get things done right. You don't jump right into that first finished piece and then say that's it. You do some experimenting. So what I'm going to do here is go into my blur tool. And my blur tool should be helpful for me to be able to try and get some of this uh, faceting out. Now, if I go into here and start to blur, you'll see this, and it already start to get rid of some of those um, high edges. However, it is going to give me, um, it's going to take a long time to do that. So I can keep doing that going across here, but it's, it's not great. So what I'm going to also try to do is go to filter and blur, and then let's try a Gaussian blur. And we're not going to do that at a giant level. We're going to maybe try and blur it out by about maybe three pixels and that's pretty good um, the problem with a Gaussian blur when we do that it's actually gonna blur the edge of our texture so if I turn off the UVs you'll notice it starts to get fuzzy over here that's a problem if I have a seam and I do have a seam for my model straight down the front of the face so if I save this out and then go to Maya so for me, um, of course, it's going to go to the wrong location first. We have to always fix that. We're going to go into White Mage Face Texture and My Images. All right, so I'm going to put that in there. Yes, hit OK. And now, OK, notice there is that white seam going down my model. So I have to fix that. Another thing that you might have noticed is mine automatically updated when I hit Save. That's because under Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, and I go to my Files and Projects. At the bottom of this, I have Automatically Reload Texture Images. This is going to prevent you from going crazy and having to reopen your Photoshop file. Instead, what I'm doing is I have, I have my model and my Photoshop file constantly refreshing every time I save. So that's very helpful. Just make sure image files, it's on, hit save, and that's gonna allow for that to happen. So let's fix some of these seams. Very easy to do so. If I go into Photoshop and okay. Now some of you might be like, well, I could just use Mudbox to paint this. Don't, I don't want you using Mudbox because Mudbox um, for whatever reason, in almost every single student that submits something that's been painted in Mudbox, everything looks like it's it's painted like this, and it's there's no not even like that. Um, let's see, no definition, just uh, there's a, there's an eyeball, and there's something else. Um, not even this nice little change of the pressure sensitivity there. It's just these really uh, chunky textures that end up being developed. For this, I want us to focus on really getting nice techniques down in Photoshop. So I'm going to take my um, marquee selection tool and just drag across right here. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go from the bottom up to make my life a little bit easier here. There we go. Oh. So I'm going to make sure about here there and I'm gonna deselect a little bit less of that so holding on the alt key I'm gonna deselect okay so I kind of want to have just around here and you can even see this little highlight there 
So I know that that's the good color and then it starts to get a little bit weird right there. So um, I want this to continue. And how can I get that to continue? I'm gonna try first this tool. And this is my spot healing brush. And I'm just painting across here. And it's just bringing this over. Now, I'm not saying this will be 100% fixed right away, but if I hit Control S and I go back to Maya, I got a lot smaller, right? So we're already, where am I going here? Let's go back to perspective, perspective, okay. So I can, I can already see that this is making a huge difference. So now I can just use uh, my blur tool again and I'm gonna reduce my, um, okay, so I'm gonna take my blur. Sorry if there's some spastic pauses and stuff in this. Uh, I have a child and a wife that keep telling me things as I'm working. Um, I'm gonna use my blur tool and just blur this over. And if that's not moving, Let's go and use smudge and let's not use something that looks like it. Um, there we go. Small little smudge, pull it over and keep pulling and just keep going with this until, and if you're doing this, um, hold down the shift key while you're doing this, it's gonna pull it straight across. So from left to right is what I'm working on. I'm really trying to make sure I get something like that. Okay, control S, check out Maya. Even better. I'm actually gonna stay at this level now and I'm gonna move on to the next one because if we move at the, the proper size of this, uh, if this was a top-down RPG, I might get maybe this close to the face in engine. So maybe like that close, but I'm never gonna go closer. And I think this is a good starting point for me. So I'm gonna leave that alone and uh, I'll go back to that as I start to move other things around. My other one, okay, so this other one right here um, has the same problems. So I'm gonna turn that one off and I'm gonna deselect this. Um, and I'm gonna use the filter, Gaussian blur, and it's already been the last thing I use. So if I just press that button, it's gonna do the same thing to this one. And so now if I go to my UVs, I can see where it starts to blur out again. So I'll do the same thing. So if I grab this over here, and now I'm gonna try a different technique this time. And I want you to be aware that there's multiple different ways to do different things for Photoshop. And this is another technique I use when these other ones don't work for me. Uh, I'm gonna go to Filter and then Blur, and I'm gonna use a Motion Blur. And notice that went this way. That's wrong. Let's go this way. Now let's also make my distance like five or even two. So you'll notice where it was to where it's going. Let's go 12 for now. Let's do this and save control S. Let's go to Maya. Fancy. Okay. So that's almost fixed that quite a bit right there. Now some other spots, not yet, but that's already looking really good. Now I have two different ones here. Actually, yes. So this, I never duplicated that one. So I have that one and this one. So there was the original one. There was this one for just the head. And then there was this one. This one's looking really nice to work with. This one's kind of kind of gross. Um, but I like that it's giving me hints of where shadows need to be. So here's where we can start to play around with combining these two. If I know that I don't want maybe all of this for this one, I want to keep this bottom part and I want the ears right here. What I should do is we'll go to the um, mask and I'm going to hit the B key and I'm just going to paint. So this is going to hide everything here. And I know it's disappearing on me. That's okay. What this is doing is it's, whoop, I don't want to get rid of that. It's just hiding that. 
this is set on melt multiply so it's going to go through the next layer now if i turn on and off that other one it now has this part gone and it's using the ears on this and then the neck over on this spot so that's that's a lot better to be able to look at um i'm going to be able to fix some other spots coming up in a second here but i do want to make sure when i hit s on here now and I look at my Maya file what that's doing okay so I've got the ears the hints of where the shadows are on there I can knock that back because that's a really large shadow and I have um, a spot where this just disappears so I'm gonna start thinking about how I can incorporate these shadows into a larger area um, first thing I'm going to do is think about the colors that I'm using. So I'm going to go into a new layer above these two and not that, but this, this new layer and we'll call this, um, added shadows or something like that. And what I want to find is a color that I think matches like this edge right here. Cause I want to continue that over this way. So I'm going to use the ink dropper tool or the eyedropper tool and I'm going to press I to get that and I'm going to uh, click somewhere around here. All right, now I'm going to use the B key. So that's going to get my brush up. I'm going to go to multiply and I'm going to start painting. And right now my default brush is messed up. Give me one second. Okay, so you need to make sure you're just in your regular brush. You don't want to go into the mixer brush. Um, so we're in regular and I'm also using legacy brushes and to get into there, just go to this little gear and we'll go to legacy brushes. And so if we click on that, it'll load up a bunch of brushes. I'm using my soft round and I am going to make sure I'm in my added shadows. I'm going to be in multiply mode and I'm going to start painting. Now I know that's looking a little bit weird, but if I start to erase certain areas here, I'm going to go into my legacy brushes and reduce that. Okay. If I erase some of these areas, I can tell that's totally matching. So, um, that's, that's good. What I'm going to end up doing now, I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to go into these two layers. Now is that point where I've copied this one. I don't need it so I can get rid of it. I'm going to take both of these, group them and duplicate them. And I'm going to take that leap of faith. This is what artists always have to do as digital artists. We always have to trust ourselves that this is going to go in the right direction. If not, we have our backup. We're going to merge these groups. So this group now is a solid um, painting. This merged group now I'm going to use to paint directly onto to fix this issue. So this added shadows, I don't even need that. And now this group copy, we're going to call our ambient occlusion. So just AO and all right, let's hit the B key. And now I'm going to paint some of that to blend it. Now you'll notice it's not painting hundred percent the same color. So that's where we use our uh, eyedropper tool sample. Another one that's closer to that other one and just keep blending these in. B and then eyedropper there. So what we're doing, we're using our brains and using the eyedropper tool and sampling and we're simulating ambient occlusion now because the ambient occlusion only could go so far for us to be able to get us the look that we needed um, off of a, a super low poly model. We have to um, now trust our fact that we were taught a bunch of different classes at art school and can actually make artwork um, that's the rap that I think a lot of digital artists get is, oh, but you do everything on the computer. Well, no, you, you should be understanding how to do a lot of different things as an artist, even though you're using a computer and the scapegoat go of just the undos and all that doesn't really fly for when you try to get hired somewhere. Um, you need to understand color theory. You need to understand how to draw. Uh, those are the people that get jobs. So. Um, what I'm going to do is hold down the control key and click on my alpha or my um, mask that I had on my UVs. I'm going to apply to this to the ambient occlusion now. And now when I paint and I go to the edge, I know that it's going to transfer all the way to that edge. So that's that's great. Now that I have this, I'm going to hit control S just to see where I'm at. I know it's not done. 
did this update yet? Yes, it did. Okay, so it's getting there. Um, I need to keep going with this. So I need to keep painting. Now, I'm gonna also just um, switch between different uh, materials or tools. I am using my blur tool and I'm gonna make it a larger blur tool here. So I am going and I'm using that Wacom tablet um, button to bring up this. So press down on that, um, I think, Wacom tablet button one on your mount. Uh, your, let's see if I can show it to you guys. Wacom. So if we look at, should be set up as right click. So push down on that, it'll bring up that little menu for you. And then now let's just start to blur away some of these pieces. Now 24, that's, that's a lot. Let's bring that down and let's start to do something like this where it may not look like much is going on right away, but we're blurring some of these values out so they actually blend better. You'll even hear my Wacom tablet going crazy because I'm aggressively blurring. That sounds like a crappy high school band. Uh, so we're going to do a blur and use that some more and then switch to our smudge tool and also do that some more. So I'm, I'm switching between these two and again practice makes perfect. You're not going to get this right away. It does take some time. Uh, just realize that a little bit goes a long way on these blurs and you don't want to um, overdo it. You just kind of want to slowly build this up. Now I notice right here I had this, this really light area. Use the B key, paints across there, and that's gone. Now I'm going to go, and I know that that's not blending well, so I'm going to use my uh, smudge and my blur and try to incorporate that brush stroke a little bit better into those colors. I also know it's a little too light right there, so I'm going to sample hopefully a darker color and go across there. Now that went too too light, let's just bring it down. Now, ambient occlusion. Why, why is this why didn't I go with, um, I'm going to bring down my opacity while I do this. Why did, why did I not use black for my ambit occlusion? Well, you guys know, and I've said this a million times, um, the way the solar system and the universe works, uh, the absence of color, yes, that's black, but when light hits things, um, you're going to have certain shadows that are created that have color in it. They're not just a, a black shadow. Um, that's such a, um, a novice mistake that is done. Um, and it's something that I think a lot of digital artists, for whatever reason, um, that's th their default uh, methodology of creating shadows. We don't ever want to do that. We want to use color. So I'm using brown because brown, um, it cues off of flesh tones very well. So um, again, I'm going to keep going in here and sampling some colors. Keep going. And I know that it probably will never get that light back there. So I'm going to just add some more in here. Vary your brush strokes. Don't sit there. And that's why, again, we're not doing this in Mudbox because for whatever reason, Every time I see a, a student-made mud box submission, it's it's one brush stroke size. There's no variation to it, and it's just um, they stink. We're not going to use them. So I've gone this far, and I'm talking while I'm doing this. So I'm not. I'm doing this a little too heavy-handed. But let's see what we did. It's actually not bad. Now you can see where it's going in certain areas. And my, my ears are probably going to be pretty dark, too, because they're in the dark. Um, so I need to kind of keep going with that. You'll notice right here I have some issues. Same thing with right here. Let's find out where those issues are happening. Let's look at this with our UVs on. Okay, I can see somewhere around here. So that's kind of where these uh, triangles are meeting over here. Same thing with right here. And then right around this edge. How do we fix that? Well, I can tell you right there, that's definitely where a spot is. Let's turn on my UVs. I can, there's one, and then there's one right there. So you can kind of tell as you start getting used to working with this stuff what needs to get fixed and how we can fix that. So what I'm going to do right now 
is go into here, blend that down by using my blur or as a smudge. And then same thing with right here. So I want these transitions because um, I want them to be as smooth as possible. What we may not notice while we're working in the texture becomes blatantly obvious when we bring that into a 3D model. So that's something that, again, um, those who are really good at drawing um, and take the time, and I think that's something as well. Uh, I say who, those who are really good at drawing, it's, it's those who take the time to be an artist that get the jobs. It's, it's, I don't care if you're not great at drawing right now. Um, I do care. You should be getting better at this. Um, but those who um, are, are painting and drawing and all that stuff, um, they're, it's all related. To tell me that you don't like to draw and want to be a digital artist working for textures, uh, there's a 0% chance that's going to ever happen for you. You really, really need to be passionate about all the arts while you're doing this, especially texturing, where this is this is very much something that is um, it calls from so much traditional um, practices. So um, let's keep going here. There we go. I'm gonna fill all this in with a dark color and hit S now. Let's see if we fix these little spots here. I find this to be extremely relaxing while I work with this. It's nothing. Um, that I think uh, it, it's something that slowly builds up and uh, you just keep working and working, put on some music, don't put on a movie or some Naruto. And I, I think I've mentioned this a gazillion times. If you're just in here because mom and dad said go to college and you got to pick a class, okay, I get it. But for those who are really focused on uh, getting a job with this it's it's this is a practice where you're not going to be watching a movie while you're trying to become a professional sports uh, person an athlete right you, you can't your, your focus is on the court or on the field so it's the same thing with becoming a professional artist um, you, you can't focus while you're playing some cheesy anime in the background you can put some music on and zone in on what you need to do and this specifically right here creating a face that's that's intense work and it does require you for you to um practice 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 and it also requires for you to realize that you're going to learn a lot more from your mistakes than you're going to learn from your successes so really really make sure that you're giving your entire um educational experience as much as you can and really that's that's focusing down and, and uh, doing these all right so that's that's starting to get a lot better again I got to fix some other stuff but I fixed a lot of my ambient occlusion and still some spots happening in here and I think it's along those edges so um, again turning on and off our UVs to find out where those little points are uh, using our smudge and our blur tool and just going into here and trying to eliminate any major spots that notice or are noticeable I'm gonna increase my uh, brush size this time and really go across here and I'm also gonna increase the strength again it may not be noticeable right away that's why we have to go back and forth. Once we get a really good baseline ambient occlusion on this, then that's when we can go into um, starting to paint the eyes and all that fun stuff. So, um, all right, is that not updating? Let me just double check here. I don't think this is file. Save, okay, it is updating. Just double check here. I'm gonna put a giant creepy eye save. Okay, she's updating. That's horrifying, but you know what? That's actually a really nice placement. So I'm gonna leave that there. Um, again, when we look at this, maybe that's gonna be as big as this is gonna be. So little spots that are showing up, me, they're really not that big of a deal. Uh, large spots are what we really need to focus on um, that are getting screwed up. What I'm going to do is go into my UV editor and make sure I have my image on, make sure I have my object selected, zoom in, and okay, 
So this is that weird part where it may seem like everything was okay. So why would I be getting this really weird line right there, right along this neck? It's this little spot where it's changing that. Well, that's because you can even see it. It's this little spot right there. So how do we fix that? Again, go into Photoshop, and I, it's actually right there, I can tell. But I'm gonna turn that on. And I'm going to use my uh, smudge and my blur, and I'm just gonna take that down a little bit. So I gotta use that, and then let's go with smudge and just pull down some of these. So again, this isn't just painting. It's painting and triaging anything that may be happening with the texture. So if you were professionally working um, at a studio, you may be the texture artist or you, that you're getting a model and you've got to work with whatever the UVs are that are there, or you have access to those UVs and you are expected to be able to triage and fix things as they come through the pipeline at you. So um, I don't think it's ever a safe thing to say I'm just to be a texture artist I don't need to understand about UVs or um, vice versa where I don't want to make textures I just want to make the models well you got to wear a lot of different hats and um, another thing to realize too even at a big studio where you may not be responsible for all of the things at once um, you do need to be able to communicate with other teammates and you need to be able to understand the vocabularies of all of the different things that are going on. So you absolutely need to understand how these things work. So that way the entire team can successfully do whatever the heck it is that you're working on. So again, I always bring up that uh, the more weapons in your arsenal, the more different things and techniques and knowledge that you have, the better off you're gonna be as a artist. And I don't care if that's an artist that's gonna um, paint portraits of dogs or if that's an artist that's gonna sit there and um, make uh, weapons for Fortnite for the rest of eternity. You, you're gonna to have to understand a lot of different concepts and the more you have, the better you are. I use that awkward idea of the um, piece of bubble gum that's sticking to all sorts of things uh, in the last video, that's exactly what I mean. All right, so let me save again. I don't think I did, now I did, and okay, that blurred out some of these pieces. Again, slowly but surely I'm getting these pieces cleaned up, and I'm really trying to make it a point that uh, these are gone, and that's gonna be a simple matter of constantly pulling back certain pieces. So I would say most of our work here is all about um, blending and blurring our ambient occlusion and trying to get this part right so I'm gonna actually see what this does I'm gonna go all the way across here I'm actually using my mouse this time and save and Maya what do you think Maya okay Maya likes it it's getting better um, I can put a different tone across the bottom of this too because that's maybe a little too hot right there but remember this is gonna be as a blend also, I can see my colors are not going all the way to the end, so I'm gonna just pull across there. Okay. Okay, so this is starting to shape up. This is how we will slowly build up our ambient occlusion. You'll notice I haven't even touched the hair yet, which is this whole strip. That's something I do separately um, as a, a rule, I'm working on one piece at a time. Um, I'm building it up to a, a level that I feel is um, a good spot to stop. And then I'll work on another spot and try and build it up to that same level. Um, that way, if I build something up too fast, too far, um, I'm not able to do that because I'm constantly building everything up to try and uh, fix and, and change certain things. So um, this is looking pretty good for the start of this piece. So uh, you can see the darkness back there. I could probably bring that into here too, but I'm not gonna do that in my ambient occlusion. I'm gonna do that in another layer and this will be shadow. And the reason why I don't wanna do that in that same layer is because this whole layer is one color really. It's, it's brown. Um, this shadow layer now is going to be purpley and that purple I'm gonna actually sample 
from somewhere around here. So I'm going to actually go maybe around like this. And I'm going to turn that on multiply. Turning on my uh, UVs, I'm going to use my brush tool, increase it a lot actually. And I'm going to go in and paint in some shadow. And so this will be the back of the head. Now you're never even going to see the top of this head. So it doesn't even really matter. Um, that's also why it's white is because that was never a spot where ambient occlusion was going to influence it. So the larger your brush is the, um, larger the um whoops the larger the uh gradient is from the uh the center so um it's kind of easy to to build that up if we go so the middle is over here but you'll notice it's affecting the edges as i do this so that's kind of nice now i know i'm going outside the bo the boundaries here and that's because my um, mask is not enabled. So I'm just going to mask that and hit control S. And now let's check out, let me turn off this part and let's see what this just did. Ooh, it didn't do anything yet. Let's see. Did this save control S. It may need to just catch up. There we go. So I'm starting to get some shadows built onto uh, the back of the head too. So, um, it's starting to get there. It's starting to um, shape up so I can start to paint on this. And this is the end of our video on setting up our ambient occlusions and our um, like base shadow. And we'll continue from there in the next video.